While doing research, I occasionally come across new books to pick up for my library. My most recent pickup is a book that only came out in Japan. And keep in mind, I can't read Japanese. But all of the text in this book has already been translated into English. This is Family Computer, 1983 to 1994, by the Tokyo Metropolitan Museum of Photography. Published by Ota Publishing in 2004, it may just be the greatest book about the Famicom ever made. It contains pictures and information on every single Famicom game released, as well as interviews with big-time Japanese developers. Let's take a look. Let's start with the outside. There's a paper cover on the front with a nice black and white shot of Super Mario Brothers. When you remove the paper cover, it's just plain red. Not very exciting, but I'm more concerned with what's inside. Within the first few pages, we find an introduction written by former Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamauchi, who passed away in 2013. Now, I don't think I've ever come across anything written by Yamauchi before, and he was known for being somewhat harsh and intimidating while running Nintendo. Well, that definitely shines through in this write-up, as he recalls that the video game crash was caused by a flood of games that were, quote, trash. It's a good read, as he takes you through the days of the Famicom, as well as what he thinks of the future for video game consoles. So the core of this book is comprised mostly of information about Famicom games. The more notable ones get full-page coverage, while the smaller ones get a little paragraph or just basic information. In the header of each write-up, you'll see the title of the game, release date, publisher, and maybe my favorite part, the price of the game when it was released. It was interesting to see the price differences, especially between cartridges and disk system games. The write-ups on the games themselves are varied. Some are pretty basic and just describe the game in general, but even these are written in an entertaining way. Others offer some pretty good insight. As I said earlier, every single Famicom game is in here, although many of the games are grouped together in one big photo. My favorite part of the book is, of course, the interviews. Family Computer 1983-1994 features interviews with several big names, including Shigeru Miyamoto, creator of Mario, Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of Pokemon, Shigesato Itoi, the creator of Earthbound, Yuji Naka, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Hideo Kojima, the creator of the Metal Gear series. The interviews are centered around their experiences with the Famicom, but they do talk about their own works as well. This is really good stuff, and I'll definitely be using these interviews for research in future episodes. There's also a hardware section, but it's not very exciting. It's just a large photo of different hardware with basic explanations of each item. I feel like this section should have had more information and history on the Famicom. In the back, there are a few write-ups from Japanese game journalists. One in particular that I like focuses on the evolution of baseball games. Most may not find this fascinating, but it goes into a lot of detail about my favorite baseball game ever, RBI Baseball, also known as Pro Yaku Family Stadium. The book ends with an index section. However, it's completely in Japanese, so if you can't read kanji, you won't get any use out of it. Now, the English translation isn't perfect, but you'll still be able to understand everything. And in a way, the spotty translation adds some charm to the book. For the vast information on Famicom games, as well as the developer interviews, this book is well worth it. Now, you will have to import it from Japan, but surprisingly, the price is reasonable. I was able to get my copy for $30, and that included shipping. Now, the book is out of print, so you will have to search Amazon or eBay for a copy. Family Computer 1983-1994 is so well done, and it's very clear the writers have a passion for the Famicom. I urge you, if you do not already have this book, go get it before it's too late. That's all for this episode of Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching.